Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. My name is Spencer, and I recently purchased this bicycle from your establishment, and not even a week later, my tires have become practically flaccid. I demand a full refund and an apology for these faulty abominations, sir. And an explanation. An explanation is what I request. Oh, boy. Okay, so let's talk about why bike tires go flat. Holy butyl rubber, Batman! Most bicycle inner tubes are made out of polyisobutylene, or butyl rubber, which is also used in gas masks, plumbing caulk, and chewing gum. Butyl rubber is really great for inner tubes because it's basically impermeable to air, meaning, normally, air can't go through it. So, how does air get out of a bicycle inner tube made from a material that isn't supposed to let air through it? PRESSURE! Consider this. The average American has a foot and a half bubble of personal space that they naturally prefer to maintain. When that personal space gets compressed, like when you're on your way to work in a crowded train, or when you're in a banging club, most people can only handle it for so long before they start to feel claustrophobic. Get me out of here! Well, air molecules are the same way. At sea level, the atmospheric pressure is about 14.7 psi, or pounds per square inch. That pressure is air's comfort zone, and no matter what, eventually it wants to have that much space around it. When we inflate an inner tube, what we're doing is packing air molecules into a really tight space. The average road bike tire inflates up to around 120 psi, so there's lots of air molecules all up in each other's business. Oh dear, it's just so crowded in here. So, let's go back to our friend Spencer at the club. Spencer is really uncomfortable here. And if he can't get out through the door, he's going to find another way to leave. So, Spencer goes into the bathroom and heads for the tiny window above the sink. Now, that window would normally be way too small for Spencer to fit through, but he's really motivated. I must be free! So, somehow, he squeezes himself through that little window into the alley behind the club. Oh, sweet open spices! Back to the air molecules. Butyl rubber is porous. It's got lots of tiny holes in it but it's generally airtight because the holes are smaller than the air. When the air gets all packed into a small space, it gets motivated. I'm gonna blow this joint. And even though the holes are too small, you'll never make it. Air really wants to get out. I will if I go one particle at a time. Wow. This process is called effusion. It's the same reason your birthday balloon goes flat no matter how tight the knot at the bottom is. Now wait just a minute, sir. I accept your premise. I reject your conclusion. My automobile's tires are made out of the same rubber as my bicycle tires, and they stay inflated for months at a time. Well, that's true. Car tires are also made from butyl rubber, but they have a few things going for them that keeps a fusion from happening. First, Car tires are quite large and relatively wide, so it doesn't take as much air pressure to keep them from deforming, generally in the 30 to 40 psi range. Less pressure means less claustrophobia, so air doesn't try as hard to get out. Secondly, the membrane that holds air in a car tire is much thicker than the membrane that holds the air in a bike tire. As you add material, air has a harder time getting out. Ah, nuts! Keep in mind, the average car tire weighs 21 pounds. Try adding 40 some pounds to your bike and see how much fun that is. Otherwise, keep in mind that bike tires often lose 5 to 10 pounds of pressure each ride, and a pound overnight. A good rule of thumb is to check your tire pressure every time you pull your bike out for a ride, and inflate them to the recommended pressure on the side of the tire. Keeping the tires topped off with air will help the tires last longer, the bike ride better, and will help prevent flat tires. You, sir, are a, a, a smart aleck. Speaking of topped off, I'd like to purchase 12 chocolate huckleberry almond energy gels. I have a 30 kilometer bicycle club tour de extravaganza this weekend, and I've concluded that that amount of energy will allow me to successfully complete my quest. We'll see you next time on Shop Science. Huzzah!